I am going to show you how to set up a basic solar charge controller just like this one. I'll show you how to cycle through the menu, adjust the settings, and connect it to the battery, the solar panels, and the load. If you're right in the middle of setting yours up, you're not going to want to miss this video. Stay tuned. To start off, I purchased this 30 amp solar charge controller on Amazon, which I'll link down below in the description. There's literally a dime a dozen of these controllers all over the place, and you can find them for around $15, which is very affordable. They're a great solution for simple solar projects, and they even have an automatic load section that can make it so the solar system can run independently. One of the most important steps during setup is connecting the battery first to the solar charge controller. If you don't do this first, the computer inside of the controller will mistake either the solar panel or the load for what it thinks is the battery. So just make sure you connect the battery to the controller first before anything else. Now in order to connect the battery to the controller, let's talk about what gauge wire you should use. I recommend using between 10 and 14 gauge wire. Without going into a lot of detail, the higher the gauge means the smaller the wire and less electricity that can flow through it. A 10 gauge wire can handle up to 30 amps of electricity, which is what this controller is rated for. A 14 gauge wire can only handle up to 15 amps of electricity. So it really just depends on your specific system needs. I'll link some wiring options down below in the description if you want some ideas. In order to connect to the solar charge controller, there's different ports down below. And all you do is take the wire and stick it into the port. And then you take a screwdriver and just tighten it down on the front. Once they're tight, then you can connect it to your battery. And right off the bat, we can see the controller is powered on. Once the battery is hooked up to the controller, you can connect the solar panels and the load. However, in this video, I'm not going to do that because it's really not necessary for this demonstration. And if you're wondering, you can set up the controller before you connect the solar panels or the load. The main thing is you need to have the battery connected to the controller in order to adjust the settings and then you can connect the solar panels or the load. A lot of you are probably watching this video because the controller you bought did or didn't come with instructions and if they did they're really confusing to understand. So let me help explain how this controller is supposed to function. There are three buttons on the interface. This one is to cycle through the menu. This is the up button and this is the down button, which it's also to turn the load on or off. And you can see the load right now is technically on with the light bulb icon, but if I press the button, then it disappears and that indicates that the load is turned off. This first screen is the main display and it shows you the current voltage of the battery. It will also tell you if the solar panel is connected and next to it there will be an arrow flashing if, if the battery is receiving a charge. In total there are six screens as you cycle through the menu. This is the first one and the next five screens show you what settings you have selected. This is float voltage, discharge reconnect, discharge stop, load timer settings, and the last screen is battery type. And then that goes back to the main display. To give you a little more information, float voltage tells the controller how full you want to charge your battery. And I would recommend anywhere between 13.5 and 13.7 volts. Discharge reconnect is the voltage you set when you want the load to come back on after it has depleted the battery. It depends on your situation, but 12.6 volts is fine. Discharge stop is what voltage the controller stops producing power to the load. The default is 10.7 but for a lead acid battery, that is way too low and you will destroy the battery if it actually gets down to 10.7 volts. I would recommend a discharge stop of 12.3 volts to keep the lead acid battery above 50% state of charge. But quite unfortunately, the parameter range only allows between 9 and 11.3 volts, which I think is ridiculous. So I would set it as high as possible at 11.3 volts. 
The load timer setting, which they refer to as work mode, can be adjusted anywhere from 0 to 24. I go in depth about the load section on another video I just posted, so if you're interested, check it out. But basically, 0 means the load will turn on from sunrise to sunset. 1 through 23 will run however many hours you choose after sunset. And 24 means it will stay on or off indefinitely. If you're not even going to hook up to the load, just leave the setting at 24 and turn the load off and you don't even have to worry about it. The last screen is to select the battery type. This controller works with lead acid flooded, sealed, and gel batteries. It won't work with lithium batteries. A flooded battery is your typical car battery that occasionally requires you to add distilled water to it. A sealed battery doesn't, and a gel battery is a little higher class. Make sure you know which type of battery you have. B01 is for sealed batteries, B02 is for gel batteries, and B03 is for flooded batteries. In order to adjust any of the settings, all you have to do is go to whichever setting you want to adjust. So I'll go to the battery, the, the discharge stop section. All you have to do is press and hold the button for a few seconds until it starts flashing, and then you can go up or down with the arrow buttons and set it to whatever voltage you want. And so for the discharge stop section, I'm going to select 11.3 volts, which is the highest that it will allow. And then you just wait for it to stop flashing and it will return to the main display and it will have saved your new setting. And you can verify that by pressing the menu button and going back and sure enough it shows 11.3 instead of the default 10.7. I'm also going to go and change my battery type from B01 to B03 because mine is a flooded lead acid battery and I know that because there's these two caps at the top that I can pry off and I can fill it up with distilled water. It's also important to note that if you want to factory reset the controller to its factory settings, all you have to do is press the menu button once and then press and hold the up arrow for a few seconds and then it will reset all of the settings back to the factory default. And you can verify that by cycling through the menu. You can see that all of the settings are back to factory default. Once you have adjusted all of your settings, if you haven't already, you can now connect your solar panel and load to the controller. And that's it. You've successfully connected and set up a basic solar charge controller that can pretty much function all on its own. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it to be helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. I also really enjoy reading your comments, so please leave your thoughts and questions below. Stay tuned for my other videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day.